Pavlovitz, is really good at taking Christian talking points and twisting them around. What do I mean by this? Well, 2 Timothy 4.3 states the following. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. One of the greatest myths today being pushed into the church is the myth that says you can kill your child and still call yourself a Christian. Even more preposterous than a Christian who is pro-death are Christians who will boldly and pridefully claim that the God of the Bible supports the barbaric and evil practice of killing one's child. To then justify such a wicked practice by arguing arbitrary free will argumentations reveals what a hardened heart looks like. The free will argumentation is Pavlovitz justification as to why he believes God supports the death of millions of babies. Only a deceived mind, deeply warped in myths could come up with something so ungodly as to claim that the God of scriptures would embrace something so barbaric as murder. I am reminded of what God told the Israelites in Ezekiel 20:31. The sacrifice of your children in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. Am I to let you inquire of me, you Israelites? As truly as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. You say, we want to be like the nations, like the peoples of the world who serve wood and stone. But what you have in mind will never happen. As truly as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will reign over you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath. Pavlovitz, free will argumentation, is plagued with self-refutations, contradictions, and no biblical context through scripture or history to support his pro-abortion theology. Therefore, even Pavlovitz tends to defer to other tactics to promote his pro-death theology, usually in the form of throwing category grenades back towards Christians, such as immigration, gun control, and COVID. Based on the amount of writings Pavlovitz has done on the topic of abortion, he really only has one or two articles that promote his free will argumentation. Versus the 10 or so articles he's written that tries to promote liberal Christianity as pro-life through his category grenades. Pavlovitz redefined pro-death theology as pro-life by arguing that Christians are actually pro-death. Of course this approach is disingenuous, as even if you subscribe to Pavlovitz, theology that stated that biblical Christians are anti-immigrant, pro-gun, and pro-COVID, you still can't affirm biblically Pavlovitz theology that says God loves it when you use your free will to kill your child. You won't find that verse in scripture. So, what does scripture have to say about children, and little babies inside the womb? Scripture is rich in this particular area, so rich I could quote verse after verse. But for time's sake, I'll quote a verse that speaks directly to the process of a little girl or little boy being knitted together inside the womb. The verse that I speak of is found in Psalms 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. The Lord is for life. It was God who created the world. It was God who created life. It was God in the second person of Christ who laid down his life for the lives of his called children. Death in scripture is supposed to be looked upon as something vile, hurtful, wicked and evil. Taking a life is never supposed to be looked upon as a means for birth control or a way to not deal with the consequences of life not going the way you planned. And please stop with the excuses. Deal with what God has spoken on about life. Don't try to derail what the Word of God has clearly spoken on when it comes to this topic of life versus murder. Redefining terminology won't help you when you're standing before a holy and just God. It doesn't matter what you think about Christians. Your presumptions on Christians can all be true. And it still doesn't change what God has said about life, and about those who take it. Think what you will about believers who are not perfect but are still being sanctified. As we are not the standard. The standard for what is righteous is God, not man. You don't get a pass for simply telling God that the gospel preacher who preached the gospel message was a jerk. Or how he turned you off from the gospel because you learned that he or she voted for Trump. God will not care. The standard isn't fallen man. The standard is God. When the Pavlovitz smoke clears from the battlefield, the only thing that will be revealed 
will be the smoking shell holes, where Pavlovitz heresy projectiles landed. If you look into Pavlovitz's reasons for why he says it's perfectly righteous to murder one's child, one should hear the word of God, rebuking any perverted notion that says you have his blessings. If you think otherwise, then please tell Pavlovitz to rebuke this video. To quote one soldier, money where your mouth is There are many other core gospel issues that we could rebuke John Pavlovitz for. But this is a marathon, not a sprint. Lord willing we will have other opportunities to rebuke Pavlovitz in the future. We thank you for watching our John Pavlovitz Rebuke series. If you like this video, or any of our other videos, please click the like button. If you could also subscribe to our channel this would be greatly appreciated. We have many videos in the production phase. This includes digitally enhanced Charles Spurgeon sermons that we will be releasing in the weeks to come. We again thank you for your support. Let me give you some pastoral counsel if you don't like this God. Tough.